Welcome back to part two of this project. Um, if you haven't seen part one, I'd strongly suggest you go and have a look at that. There'll be a link in the description below. Now, um, I'll just fill you in on where we're at. Um, we're building this pattern up across here based upon this design here. Um, I've had to readjust the design because of the variation in the thickness of the glass in this pattern. Um, overall, the three mils that I thought would average out, with some being thinner and thicker, turned out that the average is uh, quite a bit higher than three mils, and that tended to push everything out. So I had to shorten that back to about where I wanted it. And because of that, I've had to change this pattern here a little bit. So where, at, where I'm at at the moment is I am continuing with the pattern, but uh, part of what I'm doing is I'm cutting things custom size. The actual llamas themselves are fine, but the separating pieces in the middle, uh, I'm having to custom size. So that's where I'm at. I will continue on. Hopefully I won't bore you too much. And in this uh, part, hopefully, I can get all this pattern completed. We can uh, fuse it all up and then do a bit of cold working and slump it. As I thought, that took quite a while to do. Um, it's been uh, quite a few days on and off, but finally it's finished. Now, because this is getting a little bit more complex than what I've done in the past, this has taught me a few things. The uh, cinnabar gave me a bit of grief because of variation in thickness. Now, I'm not too sure whether that variation was within the one sheet because I did cut these strips from a couple of different sheets and a couple of pieces of offcut. I suspect the sheets themselves were different thicknesses. Um, this one here is thinner. It's only about two and a half mils actually. And a half a mil adds up as you go along sort of across the border there. And that's given me the problems as far as uh, making everything fit properly. Hence some adjustment in the, um, the uh, transition uh, between the patterns as they reverse on both sides. The other thing that I learned is not to cut every piece of glass up. If I was just doing that there, I'd be happy to just cut all the lengths. But because I'm doing this border here on this one, um, I wouldn't cut all those lengths in future. Um, I would cut the lengths for the animals here and possibly the ones in the middle and as long as I had enough room on the ends here to adjust so these lengths on the end here I would let float and then I would adjust them as necessary. Now I'm going to take the shelf, I'm going to lay it flat, take all the tape off, uh, make sure the little strips of thin fire are in place properly, make sure everything's lined up reasonably well and then we're going to get that in the kiln for a full fuse. Okay, it's all fused up, and as you would expect, um, on the top the glass moves and everything moves around. It doesn't look so good, but on the back, it's a, a lot better. Not perfect, but a lot better. It is handmade, so that doesn't bother me in the least. Our llama looks a little odd with that, with his white neck. Maybe it should have been a little bit thicker, but it's not too bad. This, um, I think it was the cinnabar, is a little darker than I would have liked. I would have liked it to be just a little lighter. But it is a striker glass and you don't always know exactly how it's going to show up. Anyway, 
Um, I need to now do a little bit of coal working on the edge and then I'll get it in, I'll sandblast it and I'll get it in and we'll do a fire polish. Okay, I'm back. The fire polish is complete. We've got a polish on the top. Bottom is as you would expect. But we've got a polish on the top. Looks quite nice. Um, pattern is a bit odd in some places, but I'll talk more about that a bit later. Now I'll just get this into the mould and we'll do a slump and um, see how it all comes out. A couple of things about this project that we need to talk about. One of them is striker glass. When you use striker glass, make sure to test each sheet. Just take a little piece and fire it and just see how it comes out. Um, you might, may remember that I mentioned that the striker glass here come out darker than I expected. So the contrast between it and the body of the llama isn't as much as I would have preferred. So um, yeah, double check your striker glass by firing a small piece of it um, and different sheets can come out slightly differently. The other thing about the glass is check the thickness. When you have a pattern like this, which relies quite heavily on each piece being as um, uniform as possible. Check the thickness of the sheets or sh sheet that you're using. Try and get um, each component or each color around the same thickness because as you found out in mine, if you've got a variation, it's going to uh, push your pattern out or make it smaller or worse, each little component will look different sizes. Now, you'll never get this perfect. If you like perfect and everything's got to be absolutely uniform, this sort of thing is not for you. This is, no matter what you do, is always going, going to look, um, I suppose you would say, handmade. And something else is um, accuracy on these. Um, as I've said, this is not very accurate in that the pattern is not precise in its repetition, but you can probably get a lot closer if you um, cut each piece and grind it more closely to its exact length. That way when you lay it up, and especially if you've got a more uniform thickness, it'll the little pieces will sit better 
so you'll have a more precise pattern on here but it, there's a lot of work to that you've got to take each little piece grind it on a grinder or some sandpaper or some other like that to get that length uh, more uniform through everything and as you um, there were I forget how many pieces there were but there were a couple of hundred pieces here each one of those little um, six mil long pieces would have had to have been ground and as you can imagine that would have taken a long time so I got lazy and I didn't do that don't cut everything that's um, especially if you're doing a pattern around like that because it's just going to potentially change the uh, length or the size in some way or other and some of the pieces you cut are just simply not going to fit so um, don't cut everything so another thing is the design um, this or the inspiration from this which come from a uh, I think it was a scarf my daughter sent me from South America had this sort of blocky pattern on it but if you were taking something such as a flower a picture of a flower and converting it you're going to have to convert it into this sort of blocky pattern not always easy to get it right and balanced so you'll have to get a piece of pencil and paper and some colors and try and balance that all out work that out um, and hopefully you can do a better job than I did. My poor old llama suffered a bit. I think his chest is too big. I think his butt should be a little bit bigger. Um, so that's something that you need to consider is, is working out your design. Now if you haven't watched part one and you've managed to get through part two, strongly suggest you to go and watch part one. I'll put a link to it right here. And if you want to watch a couple more videos right now, a couple of suggested ones up there, the uh, subscribe button is right here somewhere and if you want to see more of the videos don't forget to turn on your notifications and until the next video i'll say bye for now